Good morning, today is Monday and it's a shopping day for me. I've got a few errands to run, but I'm gonna show you guys the Oxbow Market where I typically grab some lunch and some fun food. And then I'm also gonna be shopping for some wine today. One of the things I really wanna focus on and, and something that people have asked me about is wine education. There's a lot of schools of thought for how you learn about wine, how a consumer learns about wine versus how a psalm learns about wine. But for me, ultimately, it comes down to tasting. So today I really wanna focus on how to taste wine and a really good systematic approach for doing that. When I was coming up through the ranks and I was learning about wine, one of the things that I was recommended to do, focus on just the varietal for like an entire week. Buy three to five different wines, all the same varietal, but from all different regions around the world and taste them. Get to know those wines, take notes, really dive into the grape and what's at the core there, what keeps coming up for that varietal, and then start looking into the different nuances of all those different flavors depending on where they're coming from. I'm gonna show you my method for how I do that. I'm always refining my palate. I'm always looking to improve. It's, it's like anything in life. Wine tasting is not something where you just you learn it and then you're done. It's it's never a finished product. It's like being an athlete or learning an instrument. You're constantly working on the craft and, and tasting wine is really no different. You really have to keep working at it. I'm gonna head down to the Napa Raley's, which has a really great selection of wine from all over the world. So I'm gonna be picking and choosing different bottles of the same varietal that I think would work. And you can follow along with me and see how it's done. First, coffee. in St. Helena, which is north in the valley. And now we're heading south to Napa proper. So the city of Napa is at the very far south end of Napa Valley. And it's sort of a burgeoning, up and coming area. New hotels, new restaurants opening all the time. It's where a lot of the younger people live. It's a little bit more affordable. I just got to Oxbow Public Market and it's kind of right down in downtown Napa. So I got my ritual coffee here, Fieldwork Brewing's here, and then of course Hog Island has one of their albums here for all of you oyster lovers. One of the great things about Oxbow that I love is there's just something here for everybody. So whether you are vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, meat lover, sushi lover, whatever it is, I'm pretty hungry. I got myself a, a poke bowl and then also a green juice from Hudson Greens and Good. These poke bowls come from Echoes. They have a standalone restaurant in downtown Napa as well, but this is just a little outpost and Poke bowls are just such a great, easy way for me to get a quick bite. Really well constructed. Fish is always fresh, and I just really like it. Got food in my belly, now it's off to Raley's to buy some wine. Raley's is really gonna have what I'm looking for, and if you buy six bottles or more, it's always 30% off. The selection here is really amazing. You get everything from grower champagne to Great Burgundy, great Italian wine, great Australian wine. So the trick to this is gonna be looking for the same varietal, looking for it in different parts of the world, and then also trying to stay within that $20 to $30 bracket. You don't wanna to go too cheap, but you also don't wanna to go too expensive. You want a nice, even playing field when you're trying to taste these wines. As I'm going down the aisle right now, I'm looking for things that are kind of sticking out to me. So right now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on soaking up block. I see a couple different ones that look interesting to me, all from classic regions. So we're gonna do one from Bordeaux, one from the Loire, and then one from California. I'm not seeing the Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire that I'm looking for, but I just remember that I have one at home, so I'm gonna use that instead. How could I have possibly forgotten about New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc? I mean, if I'm gonna be doing a Sauvignon Blanc taste, and I have to try one from there, so I think what I'll do is I'll grab this Love Block right here. Okay, it's a beautiful day, and I'm gonna sit outside and do my wine tasting. I have all of my wines home. I have the three that I bought at Raley's, and then I have the one that I had from before, which is the Sauvignon Blanc from Comsi. Looks like Quincy from the classic region of Loire. 
I honestly try to do most of my wine shopping online, at least for these purposes. But I do want to show you that it's possible to, to do this by just going to your local grocery store. You, you don't need to buy anything fancy. When I do these tastings, I'm always looking for classic regions, classic producers, and like I said, wines that are sort of in that $20 to $30 bracket. So for the Sauvignon Blanc, I'm focusing on the key regions, so Loire Valley, Bordeaux, New Zealand, and California. I will analyze each wine one at a time, taking notes in a Google spreadsheet using the standard deductive tasting grid, which is broken up into sight, smell, palate, and then your final conclusion. I definitely make sure to have a spit bucket handy because getting drunk while you do this is definitely not optimal or recommended. And I always have a reference guide handy, so I will always have the Oxford Companion to Wine out, and then also the guildsom.com website up and ready to go, which is a great compendium for any of you somebody's out there, or if you're just looking for a great reference guide with maps and notes and study guides and forums. If you have questions, people are great at answering them. It's run by master sommeliers. My colleague Kelly is their senior staff writer. I love what the Guild of Sommeliers has done for our community as far as putting correct researched information out there that is easily accessible and only $100 a year, so it's, it's really an invaluable resource that I can't recommend enough. So I begin by using this standard deductive tasting guide. So I start with the color. Uh, so I look at the color, analyze the color. For white wines, you're looking at anything from like green, pale straw, all the way through to golden and brown. This is like somewhere in the middle, it's slightly golden, it's a little bit more golden than I would suspect for Sauvignon Blanc, which is typically closer to that green pale straw, but this is also a 2014, so it does have a tiny bit of age on it. So you analyze the color, you're gonna analyze the viscosity of the wine by looking at how quickly the legs are forming and how thick they are. So I would say this is moderate viscosity. The viscosity is gonna tell you two main things. This one's gonna be whether there's residual sugar and two is gonna be the alcohol content. If you've got really thick teardrops coming down, that's gonna tell you there's a higher alcohol or there's even some residual sugar. If it's just kind of thin the, or it's even sheeting, a little bit lower alcohol and likely a dry wine. Next we're gonna to go to the nose. I'm gonna stick my nose right in the glass. I'm not gonna to get too technical with my tasting notes here, but you're likely to get some tropical fruits, you're likely to get some grassiness, some herbaceousness, even a little bit of like a vegetal component. I'm looking for not only the fruit, but I'm also looking for the quality of the fruit. So is it candied, is it cooked, is it stewed, is it just perfectly ripe, is it just underripe? I'm looking for all of those things and I'm gonna jot those down in my notes. From the nose, I go to the palate. Making sure to spit. Looking to see if the things that were on the nose are still there on the palate. So I'm gonna be writing down uh, again, pineapple, guava, a little melon, and then a little bit of a citrus component. I'm gonna take another sip. Switching, aerating, always good. Whatever your method is, it works for you. On the palate, I'm looking for it to tell me uh, the fruit, any earth component, the texture of the wine, the acidity of the wine, and then whether there's any residual sugar. So for this wine, I'm not getting any residual sugar. I would say it's moderate acidity. So I'm gonna go through all of these one by one just to get an idea of what makes Sauvignon Blanc Sauvignon Blanc. So that's kind of my process for tasting wine, and that's my Monday. So I will ask you, what varietal or region would you like me to focus on next week? Comment below. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video. I have a really fun day planned tomorrow, so make sure you stay tuned. It's gonna involve some pretty spectacular scenery. I won't tell you what it is though. See you tomorrow.